Let's welcome in the powerhouse panel this morning. We start with our special in-studio guest. Uh, he's also a best-selling author and political analyst, Mark Halpern, who's definitely not in studio, Mark, unless we've, we've got to get the monitor turned on behind you, though, so we can get some Wake Up America graphics there. Mark, good morning to you. Uh, we've got National Advisory Board member for Project 21. Christopher Arps is here. And now to our special in-studio guest, the former Lieutenant Governor of New York, Betsy McCoy, is with us. She's also a longtime columnist for the New York Post, which is, I, I think you could say they are celebrating an anniversary. Today marks one year since that uh, Hunter Biden right. laptop story. Yeah, it's upside down. Um, since it officially, <laughs> there it is. It's early, Betsy. Uh, but that story dropped one year ago today in the uh, the New York Post. And, and Betsy and I were talking about this in the green room. Um, my parents uh, up in Massachusetts both cast their vote on November 3rd, and they had no idea uh, that that story existed. They didn't even know that story was out there at that time. So here we are. Joe Biden, according to Quinnipiac, got a 38 percent approval rating. Betsy, you've been with The Post for almost a decade. If the majority of Americans knew about this story one year ago, do you think Joe Biden is president today? No, he would not be president today. And the fact is there was overwhelming evidence that Joe Biden's son, Hunter, and his brothers were receiving huge payments from foreign governments and foreign nationals. And the evidence on this laptop abandoned at a Delaware repair shop confirmed that and also critically confirmed Joe Biden's false statements, confirmed that they were false. He denied again and again ever having discussed Hunter Biden's business arrangements, for example, with China. Uh, and yet the laptop proves that he did have conversations with his son and even met with the business associates his son was making these deals with. Yeah, and Betsy, it wasn't just a headline. This story has gone on for a year. We've continued to learn more about uh, sort of what's been going on, the corruption with the Biden, uh, now the Biden regime, but then candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. Uh, Mark, John Paul Mac Isaac is, uh, is who Betsy's referring to. I interviewed him. He owns the, uh, the Mac shop there in Delaware. He took possession of these laptops. His life has been completely flipped upside down uh, ever since that day that Hunter Biden walked in and handed him his laptop computer. Let's warn Sean and Emma we're going to go a little bit over today as we talk about Hunter Biden on this anniversary because there's <laughs> lots to discuss. Right. Look, Pol Politico is now doing reporting on this story. Uh, hats off to them. For most of the dominant media, the fact hats that Hats off to Biden them. Mark, it took them a year. <laughs> well, better better than what others have done, but 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 the New York Post has three stories on this today, and I think um, the dominant media basically says, well, we like Joe Biden because he's not Donald Trump. We're going to not report on Hunter Biden because he's not the Trump children. I think eventually that's going to change, but for now, this is a story about politics and the Biden family, but it's also a story about the media and the failure to admit error, something that they're afraid if they admit, they'll have be down a very slippery slope. Yeah. Get Excuse on that me, slope it wasn't on error. It wasn't error. All of the mainstream media, with the exception of Fox, refused to cover the story, covered it up. The social media platforms and used Newsmax. their technologies I, to hide I, it before I'm the election. They rigged the election by hiding the headline about Joe Biden's dishonest family. So, Bessie, if you said I, that I, a year I, ago, we might be canceled. Mark, I, I want you to respond. But what you're saying now, it turns out that that, that in fact, this played a role in the election. There's no two time. ways about it. It did. And, and, and uh, look, error may be, you don't know, like the tone of that word, it's professional malpractice. And it, as you pointed out, it's not just not professional, Mark. Not. It's unprofessional. It was deliberate. Unprofessional. It was but, deliberate. But, but, but what, what Twitter did is, is, is also so outrageous and, again, worthy of a lot more coverage than has gotten in the dominant media. This is, these are big stories. And it's part of why Donald Trump has a chance to win the White House again. Because the failure of the press to treat, have a level playing field is something that a lot of Americans pay close attention to. Yeah. Chris. Let me point out that even today, oh. even today, the White House refuses to answer any questions about <clears throat> Hunter Biden's involvement with China. Yeah, Jen Psaki even though rolls right her eyes. at the outset of the administration. She rolls her eyes. Um, I, I want to I pivot. We're going to talk about this for the. For, Chris, go ahead, jump in. I was going to say, I think the big part of this story, too, is missing is the retired former naval officer, Mr. Bobolinsky, who was very credible, who corroborated yeah. all of the stuff that was in the New York Way uh, back Post when, story. but it was suppressed and it impacted the elections. I swear I've got to get our graphics department to give me a what if Trump were president. I, I, I do not like doing this. I've said that before because I think it's, it's, it's cheap. But if the shoe were on the other foot, and this was Don Jr., 
or if this were Eric Trump, can you literally the top would come off CNN headquarters in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. That's how big a story this would be. But because it was it was one of their guys, it was Joe Biden's son, it was good old Hunter, the now artist. Um, the media suppressed this and social media suppressed this as well, led by Twitter. So a good point there. Um, Control Room, how much time do I have? Because I got a big topic to get into and it's going to take me a minute to flesh this out. Less than three minutes. That's enough to get into it. We've got a lot more to, to we've got more panels today to do it, but I'll start. OK, so Mark, to you first on this. Uh, Greg Abbott says no vaccine mandates in the state of Texas. Uh, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, says the exact opposite. Here is world famous actor. John Voigt on what he thinks about Gavin Newsom. Take a listen. This is a disgrace to the American dream. This is a disgrace to our Constitution, our God-given rights and morals. Newsom, you are a, a disgrace to mankind. You're a weak man who can't stand for truths. You have double-talked our rights. We're a nation of, of, of our Constitution that was given by our forefathers. It's a special code of truths. All right, so not all the Hollywood elites out there are big fans of, uh, of Gavin Newsom and the Democratic Party, but here's where I'm going with this. In the state of Texas, uh, two airlines are based there. One of them is having big problems right now. Southwest Airlines now entering their fifth day of cancellations and delays. American Airlines and Southwest are both headquartered in Texas. Both airlines say they will abide by the vaccine mandate. Ron DeSantis says he's gonna fight this mandate and take it to court. Here's where I want to go. Mark, the mandate hasn't been written yet. There is no mandate. No mandate has been written. Uh, we just found out a day ago that OSHA has finally drafted an order, which is a first draft that the Office of Management and Budget now has 90 days to review. So we should be nowhere near actually firing people until that process is complete and then it is litigated. Why are these companies jumping the gun? Rob, I'm told we're out of time. We have to go to hey, I knew it. I knew. I knew that was going to be a toughie. <laughs> Um, look, I, 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 like Donald Trump and Joe Biden, think the vaccines are effective and people should get them uh, if, they're, if they're open to it. I also respect private business. I don't really understand a, an ethos that says a government official should tell a private business how they run their business. And that's what the governor of Texas is proposing to do. That's different than a federal mandate. This is a private business making its own decision. So I think that's going to be fought out in court as well. Chris, same question to you. Uh, we do not have an actual order yet. And I think the administration knows that this thing is going to get shredded in court. That's why we probably don't have it. But these companies are saying, hey, we're going to require everyone to get mandated without an actual order. There's no reason to do that yet until we have an order. Look, the airline industry is very heavily regulated, and I really don't blame Southwest Airlines and American Airlines for not wanting to get on the bad side of the federal government and Joe Biden administration. The American Airlines seem like they're willingly wanting to uh, abide by this uh, vaccine mandate, but if you listen to the Southwest Airlines CEO, he sounded like he was in a hostage video, and he's doing this under under compulsion more than anything. They're not doing they're not doing it because they're afraid of the federal government. They're doing it because they think it's a good business decision. Where's Mayor uh, Pete Buttigieg, by that, the Mark. way? Where, where's Mayor Pete? He's now our transportation secretary. He ran a city with a fleet of 47 buses. Okay, now he's got an <laughs> $87 billion budget as does his disposable, uh, disposal, and we've yet to hear from him. We've yet to hear and from him. And the government him. spends a lot of money with these federal airlines as contractors, so I think it's a, it's a money issue as well, Mark. Good start today, guys. Good start. We'll pick this back up top of the hour. Betsy McCoy, Christopher Arps, Mark Halperin, good to see all you. Again, we'll pick this back up in just a little bit.